I'm so sorry, ma'am. I know you need this medicine, but it looks like it's not covered by your insurance. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to deny that one. Wait, who are you? I'm your insurance company's pharmacy benefit manager. I get paid based on the price of a medicine, and I don't make as much money off this one. No one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 1031. How to quit your job and become self-employed. Five steps for success. Part one, by Michelle Schroeder Gardner of makingsenseofsense.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host here, and I'm with you every single day of the week reading from these great blogs on entrepreneurship. And this post from Michelle is a little bit on the longer side, so I'm gonna break it up into two parts, a Friday and Saturday version for you. So let's get right to part one and optimize your life. How to quit your job and become self-employed. Five steps for success, part one by Michelle Schroeder Gardner of makingsenseofsense.com. Do you want to learn how to quit your job and become self-employed? Whatever reason you may have, I recommend taking some steps so that you can prepare and make the transition to self-employment as easy as possible. I've been self-employed for around eight years now, and there were several things I did to prepare for the switch. I was a little scared to leave my day job in order to work for myself full-time, and preparing helped me with the transition and made me feel more comfortable. Of course, not everyone has the opportunity to prepare for self-employment, as I know that some people may be laid off from their day job, or maybe you have to quit a toxic work environment, and so on. But anything that you can do to prepare will make the switch as easy as possible. Learning how to quit your job and become self-employed is hard work, and there are a lot of steps a person needs to take before they think about leaving their current job. Even though I'm going to walk you through steps that will teach you how to prepare to quit your day job and work for yourself, there's no single right way to do it. Depending on your situation, you may take slightly different steps. That's okay, and you'll have to find out exactly what works for you. However, by taking your time to become self-employed and preparing yourself, you may have a much smoother transition. How to quit your job and become self-employed. Step one, create your business on the side of your day job. Perhaps you finally found your passion, and it means running your own business. Maybe your side hustle has grown so large that it's time to make a decision between keeping your day job or turning your side hustle into your full-time career. If you have the option, I highly recommend starting your business on the side of your day job. This is because you'll still be able to rely on the income from your day job, meaning there is less risk if your business doesn't turn out to be what you thought it would be. Starting your business on the side will allow you to see if it's, one, something you want to do full-time. Is this a business idea you'll actually like once you've started it? Self-employment isn't for everyone. Two, a realistic way to make an income. Will you be able to live on your business income alone? And three, a business that will work out or not. Is this a business idea that will succeed? Starting your business on the side of your full-time job can reduce a lot of stress. You'll be able to build up your business to the point that you're earning good money before dropping your stable full-time income. For me, I had my business on the side for around two years before I decided to make the leap into self-employment. There is no right or wrong amount of time for each person, just what you think is good for you. Two years may be too long for some people, and it may not be long enough for others. Like I said, there's no set amount of time. Step two, determine what you'll do without your day job benefits. One of the major perks of full-time employment are the benefits. Full-time benefits are something many people rely on, and you will most likely lose them when you start working for yourself full-time. I know many people struggle to leave their day job because the benefits are so valuable. When you quit your day job, it will be your responsibility to take care of health insurance, retirement, and so on. It's much better to do your research and price out how much things like health and dental insurance will cost before you quit your job. This will give you a much better idea of what your self-employment budget will be. After all, your expenses may be a little higher than what they are now, so this helps to eliminate any surprises that you may come across. Health insurance is probably the biggest hurdle for self-employed people. However, there are some options you may want to explore, including 1. Find an insurance plan on the marketplace at healthcare.gov. 2. Find travel medical insurance. 3. Joining a health share. These are not a perfect solution as they are not required to pay for your medical bills. 4. See if you can use COBRA for a short time frame. This is where an insurance company is required to give you insurance even after you leave your day job but it can be very pricey. Five, if you have a partner who has a job with health insurance, you can see if you can join their health insurance plan. 
And six, if you belong to a professional group or association for the industry you're in, they sometimes offer health insurance options for their members. All of these options will have pros and cons, and not all of the options will make sense for you. Take time exploring each one, from how much it costs to if there are any restrictions for the type of care before deciding which is best for you. If you want to learn how to quit your job and become self-employed, taking your time to research benefits is a very important step. And unfortunately, health insurance is a hard topic that doesn't have a single easy solution for everyone. Step three, hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled How to Quit Your Job and Become Self-Employed, Five Steps for Success by Michelle Schroeder-Gardner of makingsenseofsense.com. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I know you need this medicine, but it looks like it's not covered by your insurance. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to deny that one. Wait, who are you? I'm your insurance company's pharmacy benefit manager. I get paid based on the price of a medicine, and I don't make as much money off this one. No one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. This episode is brought to you by Google. Cyber attacks on critical infrastructure threaten essential services. That's why public institutions like schools, hospitals, and government agencies across the country are partnering with Google to keep their data safe and secure. Because when organizations run on Google Cloud, they're defended by the same AI-powered security that protects all of Google. Explore how Google is keeping more Americans safe online. Visit safety.google forward slash cybersecurity today. And as always, I want to thank Michelle, one of our regular contributors, for sharing this post. She created Making Sense of Sense to keep track of her own financial progress, help readers improve their finances, and help her own personal finances. As an example, due to this, she was able to pay off $38,000 in student loans in just seven months. She lived in an RV touring North America, and these days she lives on a sailboat. She and her husband actually sold their house and became full-time travelers. And like many of the authors on our shows, Michelle went from being in debt to being financially free. And you can follow the journey yourself because she has documented the entire journey right there on her blog. She publishes monthly income updates and shares how she now earns over $100,000 a month online. She's pretty open about it, so you can check all of that out. And again, her site is makingsenseofsense.com. Okay, that's gonna do it for part one. And come on back tomorrow for the Saturday show because that's where we're gonna wrap up part two of this post. And it's where your optimal life awaits.